So in my opinion, the M2 MacBook Air is the most confusing laptop in Apple's lineup. And honestly, I do wanna help all of you beautiful humans out there make that buying decision if you happen to be interested in this device. And this isn't about saying that the MacBook Air isn't worthy of your hard earned investment. This take is really just from my firsthand experience with the M1. And I know many of you will likely be seeing and hearing information that could confuse you even more. And I do have the base model and of course the upgraded version coming in next week. And it is easy to say that the M2 13 inch MacBook Pro doesn't belong or make any sense at all, but that is just a low hanging fruit because it's really the MacBook Air that has caused confusion since its removal from that envelope in 2008 for of course different reasons in that it was the most overpriced device that was barely worth the stamps to mail that thing in. And it was so niche that I was even hard pressed to invest in it in my own business as we just opted for MacBook Pros for our enterprise purchases but now there is a much different reason in why this is just as perplexing because of what is under its fanless hood. And the base model right here makes the most sense if you're considering what you'd actually need or want in an ultra portable. However, any thought or desire to pivot out of the day-to-day -day use that starts to tease out any kind of development, modeling, video editing, or editing more than 10 photos, then this is where I think many start to become cemented in the crossroads. And because at this point, you look at the upgrades such as RAM and possibly storage space, and all of a sudden you're in the M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro's neighborhood. And if you're not careful, you'll find yourself knocking on that door with additional upgrades, but I'd recommend texting before you do just drop by and knocking on the door because who in the world still does that today? But keeping in mind that for those of you who are coming from Intel machines, those of us that have been testing the M1 can easily say that for most of your workflow scenarios, you are going to notice a leap in performance. Whereas coming from M1 going to M2, this of course is iterative, as I've said before. And although it, it still is an improvement, but it's not that earth shattering jump that you might expect. And of course, speaking of earth, did you check out the images from the James Webb Space Telescope? I mean, that is a leap. We say they're distant neighbor. But once you start to consider the M1 Pro, it's probably time to ask yourself why you didn't even consider it in the first place. And if it's because of the initial 1199 US price tag on the M2, and I realize it is much more expensive in other countries, but this is where I think the issue begins because then you might lose sight of the value proposition and what you had originally set out on. And that's of course, to have a very capable ultra portable. And the 14 inch may have been considered an ultra portable when compared to this beast, but not in today's standards. This thing actually has a, a Wi-Fi card in it. But do you need an SD card slot? That's a solid yes for me, but how often will you actually need it if at all? And what about getting scooped up with the marketing speak of high fidelity and studio quality when talking about the speakers and the mic? And of course, do you think the ones on the MacBook Air are gonna be trash? And then there's the display. The display of course is gorgeous. It's not XDR level, but it's still stunning. And so why didn't this pull you originally onto the M1 Pro? And so if you want to edit some videos or photos occasionally, the M2 MacBook Air has you, and quite frankly, the M1 does as well, but staying focused on the M2, so you're telling me that you might want to film with your iPhone, or better yet, you've just dropped some coin on a full frame mirrorless 10-bit H.264, 265 codec, and you want to make videos like this, or a vlog, or just some other type of filming for an online platform, then the MacBook Air still has you covered. And GoPro and DJI drone footage, I mean, it is compressed and it does need a little unpacking. And of course the MacBook Air, it'll make it sweat a little bit and likely drop a few frames unless you convert it to ProRes, which is a realistic real world scenario in this particular case. But if you're talking about hour long documentaries with multicam footage, layers of heavy grading effects, and some of that 8K raw, just to, on top of everything else, then we need to really back the truck up because you didn't mention that from the get, including the fact that this is your only device in which you can perform all of those tasks. And so if you wanna rough cut some footage while on the move, maybe even start building out that timeline, I do think that you're gonna be solid. And I've done this on the M1 Air. However, I also have other machines that I can fall back on when I need to scale. So the M1 Mac Mini, it has gotten me really far in this journey, but I do have projects now that do demand more because that's actually what I've chosen for myself. And if at any time you start finding yourself having to jump out of the car to push it up the hill, and really what I mean by this is that if you're doing tasks just fine, and then all of a sudden you come up with some hypothetical scenario that may have you in the same situation where you're having to only run one or two apps, closing down all your browser tabs, 
or the browser altogether, or having to reboot your machine to give yourself a running start to get the task done that you need to get done, then this really is unacceptable at this price point for the M2. You have chosen the wrong tool for the job. And if we keep saying here on the platform as we're running all these tests, then you should consider the 14 inch if you need that thermal headroom and extra muscle. Then again, I would ask you, what is the appeal of the M2 MacBook Air? Because if it's just the starting price and not just because it's an ultra portable, then price alone should not dictate the decision. If price matters that much, then I am certain there are other non-Mac options where you can start with a base model device that allows you to upgrade it later as your available funds start to allow, or the M1 if you really wanna be within the Mac OS ecosystem. But this is what I love. It's the fact that this device is going to continue to turn heads and hopefully continue to move the entire industry along because hate them or love them, Apple does have very heavy influence on the consumer markets here, and that is what will be great for the consumer. And as I said earlier, I just wanna make sure to help you get out of your own head, take a step back, ask yourself realistically, what do you need out of the device that you're spending your hard earned dollar on? Because you're gonna question whether you should just spend the extra couple of bucks on the 14 inch in an inflated and watered down dollar market. But we will be pushing these devices to the brink and I am certain we will continue to be pleased and of course surprised. Since the M1, we finally have an ultra portable from Apple that will wipe the floor with just about everything else that there is and what you really needed to do, but as long as you're not making a full length documentary with Ari Alexa footage, expecting it to not throttle. And I will be testing whether the 16 gigs of RAM is still recommended with those heavier tasks because I've always recommended that upgrade. I'm of course prepared to be wrong, although I don't think I will be, but I am ready. And I will be diving immediately into testing for you. And just like some of my previous videos, you will be invited behind the scenes to see what I am seeing just as I start to push these machines to what I'm admitting to be both realistic and unrealistic scenarios. Of course, stay tuned for that testing. I hope to see you really soon. And as always, you go rock those faces right off. Hang out with me in the comment section and I will catch you right back here on the next one.